previously testify un under an investigative subpoena in this matter? Yes. And did you describe during the course? Now was under oath, correct? I'm sure it was, correct. All right. And that was me asking the question? Is that the one that was here at the courthouse? Yes. Yes. All right. And do you remember asked being, uh, being asked to counsel page 31 investigative subpoena? asked about the custody arrangement of Haley at that time frame and saying, I'm sorry, and asked if there were difficult feelings. And do you recall what your answer was? No. All right. Please take a minute because I'm going to ask you to read down on this page and look the next page. I have a series of questions. To the second page, correct? Yeah. Let's start with that. Do you recall being asked under oath to describe your relationship with Ariel during that time frame? Yes. And how did you describe it? Very difficult. In fact, did you say you had hard feelings and she had hard feelings? Yes. All right. Did you testify under oath as to whether or not Ariel was welcome at your house? Yes. And what did you say? No. No what? No, she was not welcome at our house. Were you asked the question in regards to whether or not you discussed with your son if he wasn't the father, who could be the father? I wouldn't have known who the father would have been, but I'm sure we had the discussion. Did you testify under oath that your son indicated that it was several other persons that could be the father? Yes. All right. Did you testify under oath? You said it certainly wasn't him who was the father? That I said that? Yes, under oath. Page 32. What was your question again? All right. Did your son make the statement to you it certainly wasn't him who was the father? Yes. And did you describe how your son would talk about Ariel at that time frame? Yes. What did you say, Andrew? Talk her down for one reason or another. I said yes. That you shared that opinion with Sean? Yes, because that's the side we were being presented. I was just asking you to refresh your memory if you would. I have a question for you. Okay. <clears throat> Did you testify in your oath that your son would frequently talk Ariel down for one reason or another? Yes. Right. Did you ever discuss with Ariel who the father of the child was? No. Did you ever discuss your son with your son the subject of your son urging Ariel to adopt out the baby? 
Did I hear him discuss that? Yes. I or did you discuss it with him? I don't remember. All right. Do you know when Catherine Phillips was born? The end of January, 1st of February, 2011. Did you go to the hospital when she was born? No, I did not know she was having her at that point. All right. Did you ever see baby Catherine in the month of February? No. Why not? Why not? We never went over to her apartment. Did you see her in March? No, we never met her. So between Catherine's birth in February and June 29th of 2011, you never met Catherine? Correct. Were there time, let me ask you this question, were there time frames when your son would stay away from the house at night more often than not? Yes. And then times when he'd be at the house spending the nights there more so? Yes, he would definitely be there when Haley was there. Did your son keep a lot of things about him and Ariel secret? Apparently so. <clears throat> Let me ask you this, um, and I know, I know this is difficult, but is it fair to say that you treated Big Catherine different or didn't treat her at all, really, um, than Haley because you didn't know she was your grandchild? Correct. All right. Did you know that Ariel had put your son's name on the birth certificate as the baby's last name? No. Did you know that um, Ariel had birth announcements made up? Not until later. How did you find out later? She gave us one. Who had custody of Haley after um, Catherine was born? Did it remain pretty much the same? I believe it did. And did your son have any custody in regards to baby Catherine? No. Now you testified to the jury that at some point you became aware that your son was served with paternity papers? Correct. Were you there when he was served? Yes. Can you tell the members of the jury how he reacted to being served? He acted surprised. Was he angry? No, just surprised. <coughs> Did you hear the conversation he had with the deputy? I don't think we stayed outside for that. I think we went back inside. All right. So he might have more information than you? The deputy? Yes. I would assume so. Okay. Did your son tell you that he didn't understand why he was being served? Yes. confronted you, um, well let me ask you, this. had Ariel confronted you, called you after the birth of the baby, or tried to get you to indulge the baby in any way? No. Had anybody approached you on the street, in the store, or anything to ask about your grandchild? Somebody approached us in the store. All right. How did that make you feel? Odd. Now, in the time frame right before Catherine disappeared, was there a, a dispute brewing basically over custody of Haley for the 4th of July holiday? I don't recall that there was, no. Trial transcript 154 constant. Approach the witness. 
that one page is all I'm asking for right now. Does that refresh your memory as to how you testified under oath in 2012 as to whether or not there was a custody dispute brewing about the 4th of July? Yes. All right. And what did you answer? Yes. Was the 4th of July for some reason particularly significant that year? Like it says in the transcript, he liked to keep track of the holidays. So in his mind, it might have because his deployment kept getting pushed back and pushed back. So he wanted to have um, as much time with her as possible. I want to direct your attention to June 29th of 2011. Did you see your son on that day? Yes. All right. Did he sleep at your house the night before the 28th into the 29th? Yes. Where was Haley on that date? She was with us. All of us. Did your son leave your residence at some point on that day? Yes. Did you know he was going to get his DNA sample taken? I don't recall that I I don't think he I don't think that I knew that he was going for that. No. Did he take Haley with him when he left your residence on that day? No. Did you hear from Ariel Cortland on that day? Yes. Can you tell the members of the jury when did you first hear from Ariel Cortland on that day? It was in the afternoon. She called. Describe her demeanor. Did you, did you actually speak with her or was it a voicemail? I don't remember the first contact. I'm sure you have it all on record, but it's either I listened to the voicemail and then I talked to her, or I talked to her and then I had a voicemail or a text message. Either way, I knew she was trying to reach us. Okay. And so I So you don't remember the order, but you I do not remember call. the order, but okay. yes, she was trying to find us. And how was her voice? She was very upset. Say. She was looking for Sean and Kate. Remember what else she said? That they were missing, that he took off, and she wants to know where Kate is. Remember anything else? She was just very upset and telling me that this was my granddaughter and that she wants her daughter back. Did those calls have, um, for lack of a better term, an aura of seriousness to them? Yes. Do you remember where you were when you received the message, or the first message? I was still at home. I was home the entire day. Did you attempt to take any action after receiving a call or a voicemail, whatever came first from Ariel? I tried reaching Sean. And what happened when you tried to reach him? I couldn't get him to answer. When you say you couldn't get him to answer, what do you mean? I couldn't get him to answer the phone. All right. Did it go to voicemail? I don't remember. Would you uh, remember leaving a message for him? Probably tried, yes. And was he using a, a cell phone that had belonged to the family as his cell phone? We went through several phones back then, and he had, he had his own. We had the house number on a cell phone. I had a cell phone. Larry has his work phone. And was one of the cell phone numbers 231-757-4931? Yes. All right. That was our home phone number. And was Sean using that as his cell phone on the day in question? He could have been. Did you attempt to contact Ariel after receiving that information? Or that message from her? She, I think, eventually got through to me, somehow or another. What did she say when she actually got through? Same thing she told me in her messages, that she was trying to reach Sean, that he was not there, she did not know where he was, and she wants her baby back. Did you get into a fight with Ariel on that day? You know, I probably did. Now, 
during the course of that afternoon, did um, the Ludington police ever come to your house? Yes. How many times? Several. All right. Well, let's start with the first time. Who was home when the Ludington police came to your house the first time? Just myself and, and Haley. And do you remember who came to your house? It might have been Officer Custer, but I don't remember. Had your son come home yet when Officer Custer came to your house the first time? No. And what did Officer Custer tell you? That they were looking for Sean and had we seen him. And he asked if he could look through the house just to make sure. Right. And I invited him in and he did a whole walk through the house. And once he was convinced that Sean and Kate were not there, then he, I, I think he left at that point. All right. How long was Officer Custer at your home that first day? That first time, I'm sorry. 10 to 15 minutes. After Officer Custer left your house, did you make any calls yourself? Did I make any calls myself? Yes. I would have only tried to call my husband. Did you call your daughter and tell her to come home? I may have. Did you tell your husband to come home? I'm sure I did. Tell the members of the jury, when did you next see your son? I don't have the time frame in the top of my head, but he came home later that afternoon. All right. And once again, would you agree that your, I know this is tedious, but your memory was better back in 2012? Right. Did you, page counsel, uh, page 165. Would your testimony on your oath refresh your memory as to what time your son arrived home on that day? Yes. Starting with line 10, why don't you just read to that? How did he arrive back at the house? He drove. All right. Did you see him pull in? If you remember. I mean, I was totally constantly looking out, so either I heard him, I don't think I could visually see because I cannot see from the living room up our driveway. Okay, so you were waiting for him. Is that yes, fair? yes, right. for anybody. Tell the members of the jury what your son did when he first arrived home on that day. He walked up to the door and then I immediately went to the door and greeted him and I started asking him questions. What kind of questions were you asking him? About Kate and where he'd been and... Did you and ask I, him where Kate was? I did. What did he tell you? That he didn't have her. Where did he tell her, tell you she was? With Ariel. Did the defendant have anything in his hands when he came home? No. Did he bring fireworks into the house? Later. Okay, when was that? After he made another trip out to the car, and then he brought those in. When he first walked up to the house, he didn't have anything with him. All right. No baby? No. Did you tell your son that the police were looking for him? Of course. What else did you tell him? that he needs to call right away. How did he react? He said he would. <clears throat> and were you inside having this conversation or still outside? I walked, I walked out briefly to peek in the car to satisfy my own curiosity and then I came back inside with him. Did the defendant call the police back immediately? He waited a little bit. We talked first. And did you remind him a second time to call the police? I don't know if I reminded him, but he knew he had to call. Did you tell your son that Ariel had called you several times that day? 
Yes. What did the defendant say when you told him that Ariel had called? I don't know what exactly he would have said. Did he get angry? He doesn't get angry, he just gets upset. Did you previously make a statement that he was mad you were talking to Ariel? He might have been upset that I was conversing back and forth, and but I said that she called, anxious about Kate, and they need to know where she's at. Right. You told the jury that you um, peeked into his car. Can you tell the members of the jury of what areas of his car you looked in at that point? Well, I first looked in the rear seat, and then I looked into the front um, passenger seat to make sure that the baby wasn't still, you know, inside. Did you look into the trunk? No. All right. Now, you indicated in your testimony that at some point your son brought some fireworks into the house. When was that? A little bit later. Before the police got there? Yes. And what, what did he do with the fireworks when he brought them into the house? He placed them up on top of the refrigerator or he handed them to me or something. Did he show them to you first? He did. Did he say where he had purchased them? Just down the road. During the course of time, let me ask you this. How long did it take the police to respond to your house after your son arrived home on that date? It didn't seem like it was very long because, I mean, it had to have been within half an hour, 45 minutes. You were quick. Did you ask him why he wasn't answering his phone or hadn't taken any of your messages that you had? I asked him that I, I told him that I had called several times and he was not answering. He didn't say why he didn't answer. Did he ever say that he turned the phone off? At some point he did. During the course of the time as you were waiting for the police, what areas of your household was the defendant in? He was in the kitchen because I was in there preparing dinner, so he came into the kitchen with me. He was in the living room because that's where Haley was. He went into his room briefly, came back out to see Haley some more. Did he seem concerned about the situation? Not overly, no. In fact, did you tell the police he was acting like nothing was out of the ordinary and he was calm? He was fairly calm. How long before the police arrived at the house? You already asked me that. I'm not really sure. All right. Do you know what time it was? Let me ask you that. No. Do you have any more discussion about where the baby might be before the police arrived? I think I'd already covered that with him, and I, I, I got no answer. You didn't pursue the issue? I did ask him, yes, but he said again that she was with Ariel. Before the police arrived, did Ariel call back again while your son was there? That I do not remember. Where was your son when the police arrived? I think he was waiting outside for them. Were you outside or inside? I was inside. Did you speak to the police? Not right away. Let me ask you this, just backing up for a minute, you indicated that while he was at the house you had some interaction with him. Did you ever notice a bulge in the pocket of his shorts? I did not. Now, when the police arrived and the, um, your son was talking to them, had your husband arrived home at that point? Mm. Yes, he must have because he was there, yes. Did you ever see baby clothes on that date? On that date? Yes. Yes. Where? The police had found them and had them on the trunk of the car. Did you see them take the clothes out of anywhere? No. We were still inside while they were questioning him. So I missed that whole 
confrontation. And did your son ever, from February till June, have baby clothes for Catherine that you know of in your household? Not that I recall. What were you thinking when you saw the baby clothes? Why does he have them? But he said that he went with them to an appointment. Did you see the car seat and the diaper bag removed from the trunk of your son's vehicle? I saw it after it was removed. All right. What were you thinking when you saw those items? Why are they in the trunk? At some point, did the police leave with your son? Yes. Council, I'm going to take this opportunity, uh, hold that question, 